John Wesley Powell, Expeditions, Green River into the Great Unknown, 1869 and 1871, the 150th Anniversaries. This is a presentation from the Sweetwater County Historical Museum. John Wesley Powell in Green River, Wyoming, a video tour from the Sweetwater County Historical Museum. John Wesley Powell, a professor, soldier, explorer, scientist, surveyor, and bureaucrat. Powell's story, like this statue in front of the Sweetwater County Historical Museum in Green River, Wyoming, is larger than life. Powell himself was five foot six and a half inches tall. Pictured is the Green River Station in 1869, about the time that John Wesley Powell would have been in the area. The photo is a William H. Jackson photo. Having made up my mind to explore the gorge, I came from the mountains to Chicago last spring to procure outfit and build boats. Four of these were made in a model devised for the purpose of navigating canyon streams and taking them out to Green River stations. Where the Union Pacific Railroad crosses the Green, I was ready to embark. Powell's boats, supplies, and expedition members were transported free courtesy of the Union Pacific Railroad. There, I had a party of nine men awaiting my arrival and anxious to enter the great unknown with me. All men experienced in the wildlife of the country and most of them in boating on dangerous streams. Major Powell's report on his own explorations of the Rio Colorado in 1869. This is an 1868 map used by Powell on his first expedition into the great unknown from the USGS. Compare it to a recent map on the following slide from modern USGS publications. This photo is of Green River City in 1868 from the Denver Public Library. The town of Green River consisted of about 13 houses, and some of them were in such complex construction that one hesitates whether to describe them as houses with canvas roofs or tents with boarded sides, from the diary of Frederick Dillenbau, artist for the 1871 expedition. Pictured is Powell's first camp at Green River City in 1871, and is an E.O. Beeman photo. A space was cleared in the thick willows for a general camp over which Andy was to be a master of ceremonies, at least so far as the banqueting division was concerned. For sleeping quarters, we were disposed in two vacant wooden shanties about 200 yards apart and a somewhat greater distance from the cook camp. From the diary of Frederick Dellenbau, artist for the 1871 expedition on April 29th, 1871. Pictured is Green River City as it was in 1871, an E.O. Bowman photo. These shanties were mansions left over, like a group of roofless adobe ruins nearby from the opulent days of a year or two back when this place had been a terminus of the line during building operations. Little remained of its woolen grandeur, a section house, a railway station, a number of canvas roof domiciles, Fields outfitting store, and the aforesaid shanties in which we secured refuge, being about all there was left of the place. Diary of Frederick Dellenbau, artist for the 1871 expedition. Pictured is Samuel Jake Fields outfitting house in 1871. It is an E.O. Beeman photo. The inset is of S.I. Field and is from the Sweetwater County Historical Museum's photo collection. We reached Fort Badger, Bridger, and then on to Green River Station on the Union Pacific Railroad, where we camped and awaited orders and in the meantime tried to drink all of the whiskey there was in town. The result was a failure, as Jake Fields persisted in making it faster than we could drink it. Diary of John Colton Jack Sumner, head boatman for the 1869 expedition. Pictured is the Green River Bridge in 1869, a William H. Jackson photo. We went to look for the flat car with our boats which had been sent to head from Chicago. The car was soon found on a siding with the help of some railroad employees. We pushed it along to the eastern end of the bridge over Green River and there on down the side put the boats into the waters against whose onslaughts they were to be our salvation. Diary of Frederick Dellenbau, artist for the 1871 expedition on April 29th, 1871. 
top left is the building of the Green River Bridge in 1868. It is a W.H. Jackson photo from the USGS. Above, you can note the original rock piling supporting the current bridge as of 2016. This photo is from David Mead. Pictured are Powell's boats at the launch site in 1871. Note, all photos are from the 1871 to 1872 expedition, as that was the only expedition they brought a cameraman with. This is an E.A. Beeman photo. We had some trouble in making landing where we wanted to, in a little cove on the east side of about a half mile down, which had been selected as a good place for our preparatory operations. Here, the three boats were hauled out to receive the final touches. They were named the Emma Dean, the Nellie Powell, and the Cannonita. From the diary of Ed Frederick Dellenbau, artist for the 1871 expedition on April 29th, 1871. Pictured is Powell's launch site in 2018. This is a David Mead photo. Pictured is the Powell expedition launch site as taken in 2003. The launch site itself was at the foot of Southwest Street. Field's outfitting house was on West 2nd Street. Pictured is a Google map of the site. Powell's expedition site was a little bit above the expedition island that is named for this expedition. Fish Buttes is pictured at left and Badlands above camp number one is pictured right near Green River in 1871. Both are E.O. Beeman photos. After breakfast, the Major, Steward, and myself climbed Fish Butte, found some nice specimens of fossil fish after a couple of hours, search, returned to camp. This is from the Journal of John Hiller, a photographer for the 1872 expedition on May 17, 1871. Pictured are some rock formations near Green River City in 1871. Of special note are the photographer's equipment you can see at right. This is an E.O. Beeman photo. Powell's expedition is ready to launch, pictured in 1871. This is a close-up of the E.O. Beeman photo pictured earlier. Our boats are four in number. Three are built of oak, stanchion firm, double ribbed with double stem and stern posts, and further strengthened by bulkheads, dividing into three compartments. Two of these, the fore and aft, are decked, forming watertight cabins. It is expected that those will buoy the boat should the waves roll over them in rough water. The fourth boat is made of pine, very light, but 16 feet in length, with a sharp cut water and every way built for fast rowing and divided into compartments as the others. The little vessels are 21 feet and the cargoes can be carried by four men. We take with us rations deemed sufficient to last 10 months, for we expect when winter comes and the river is filled with ice, to lie over at some point until spring arrives. And so we take with us abundant supplies of clothing likewise. We have also a large number of ammunition and two or three dozen traps for the purpose of building cabins, repairing boats, and meeting other exigencies. We are supplied with axes, hammers, saws, augers, and other tools, as well as a quantity of nails and screws. Canyons of the Colorado, J.W. Powell's Diary from May 24th, 1869. The Powell Expedition ready to launch in 1871. E.O. Boom and photo. May 24th, 1869. After many weeks of weary waiting, today sees us all ready for the adventure of an unknown country. After much blowing off of gas and the fumes of bad whiskey, we were all ready by two o'clock and pulled out into the swift stream. The party stopped in camp and exchanged tough stories at a fearful rate. We turned in early, as much of the men had been up for several preceding nights, taking leave of their many friends, a la Muscovite. The natural consequences were foggy ideas and snarly hair. Diary of John Colton Jack Sumner, head boatman for the 1869 expedition. Pictured is an illustration from Canyons of the Colorado by John Wesley Powell. It is a Thomas Moran etching. The good people of Green River City, Wyoming, turned out to see us at start. We raise our little flag, push the boats from the shore, and the swift current carries us down. From Canyons of the Colorado, John Wesley Powell's Diary, May 24, 1869. Pictured is just downstream from Green River, Wyoming in 1871, an E.O. Beeman photo. 
A mile or two below town, we run on a sandbar. The men jump into the stream and thus lighten the vessels, so that they drift over, and on we go. In trying to avoid a rock, an oar is broken on one of the boats, and thus crippled. She strikes. The current is swift, and she is sent reeling and rocking into the eddy. In the confusion, two other oars are lost overboard, and the men seem quite discomfited, much to the amusement of the other members of the party. Catching the oars and starting again, the boats are once more borne down the stream until we land a small cottonwood grove on the bank and camp for noon. During the afternoon, we run down to a point where the river sweeps the foot of an overhanging cliff, and here we camp for the night. Pictured is Firehole Canyon in Sweetwater County, Wyoming, in 1871. It is an E.O. Beeman photo. Powell's story did not end there. Check out our channel to continue the story and learn more about John Wesley Powell's connections to Sweetwater County, Wyoming. Please note, objects and images shown in this video may or may not be on display. Please contact us or any other posted institution before you visit if you would like to see any of the objects or images displayed. Check out our channel for more videos on John Wesley Powell, old exhibits, and much more. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out sweetwatermuseum.org and our social media for some great history and to stay up to date with the Sweetwater County Historical Museum. This has been a presentation of the Wyoming and Sweetwater County History Outreach from Sweetwater County Historical Museum in Green River, Wyoming.